I'm here at World of Concrete 2022 and behind me is Kobod's booth. Right now they're running some tests. You can see in the front they've demonstrated how they're able to have a variety of finishes on their printed layers. Today they're printing with Quickcrete. They've also announced a new material partnership with CMEX where you can use any local concrete with just 1% additional additive. This is going to revolutionize the industry. They also have a new batch plant and we'll talk with tons of their team members about all the progress they've made since we last visited with them in Denmark last May. They have been doing a little pre-print, a test print, before the actual show days of World of Concrete. So, yeah, yesterday we did a lot of smaller prints. We just had fun, drew some chairs, we did a little <laughs> dark house, uh, we did some walls that Specmix have been doing some different surface treatments to today and now today as well, like while they were doing the treatments, we have been doing a, a small test print that is kind of a, let's say, a rehearsal for the live days. Here's Cobot's new batch plant that will enable them to have higher precision with their material quality and also allow them to print with larger aggregate sizes, bringing them into the realm of real concrete as opposed to mortars. Some people don't like the printed layers, but personally, that's my favorite part. If you want to cover it up, it's easy to just smooth it out with some plaster, uh, gypsum-based material, or shotcrete. This can be done with equipment to automate the process or by hand, very simply and cost-effectively with just a trowel. Hi everybody, my name is uh, Philip. I'm co-founder here at Cobalt International. I manage our operations in North and Latin America. And what you see here behind me, which I guess you were about to ask me, Jared, is we're live here at World of Concrete in Las Vegas, where we're actually 3D printing live building elements as we speak. At Cobalt, we produce and manufacture 3D construction printers, and we have partnered with two other great organizations in making this come alive. So number one is a materials expert. Uh, they're providing the uh, 3D printing mix. That's QuickRead, QuickRead companies. And the other company that we're working with, which is We Print Homes, builder and developer. Perfect trio here of a technology provider, a materials expert, and a, a contractor actually using this technology. Talk about some of the reasons the layers look so good today on this print. A lot to say uh, with regards to the team. So we have a really good team here with a lot of knowledge and expertise. Also, secondly, the materials, of course, also very important. We're partnering with QuickRead being one of the pioneers within uh, 3D printed mixes, that, that of course also helps quite a lot. And yes, Jared, it, it does look really, really smooth today. I'm, I'm very, very satisfied. One thing you mentioned when I first got on this site that it wasn't at the last project I visited is the new batch plant mixer. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So I'm not sure if you can actually see the batch plant here in the shot, but uh, down there to the left, I'll just explain it, we have a concrete batch plant. Now this concrete batch plant in essence allow you to uh, mix your own concrete using locally sourced materials. So you would use your locally sourced sand, uh, gravel and cement, of course also water, to mix that concrete locally. Now, but here at Cobalt we're uh, very agnostic when it comes to materials, so we're fully open source. So you can either do that, uh, mixing your own locally sourced concrete, but you can also use a, uh, a dry mix such as QuickRead, uh, which we're using here today. So, and there are pros and, and cons to each system, but for us as technology provider, it's very, very important uh, that we allow our customers to choose which type of material that they want to do. And recently you had a huge announcement material-based about a DFAB material. Can you touch on that a little bit? Sure. So when we're talking about the uh, concrete bass plan here, what we have developed together with uh, Semex, so Semex is, I believe, a top five global uh, cement manufacturer. What we've developed is a solution that will make, you can take locally sourced concrete, mix that, add in the, the additives, and then make it 3D printable. Because you will not be able to actually 3D print uh, using regular concrete. You have to work it in order to make it 3D printable. And now that's the balance you really want to, there's a balance between, you could say, two poles. One is you want it to be fluid enough that you can actually have it come through the hose, as you see there from the bass plan, over here down to the, to the print nozzle. But on the other hand, you also want, when the, the mix is extruded here in the layers, you want it to set such that the layers stack on top of each other and it all doesn't slump out. 
So the solution that we've developed, uh, Cobot and, and Semex, is a set of... Uh, they're so happy they're, they're singing there in the back. Uh, is a set of additives that are added both at the uh, bass plant and also at the uh, printhead in order to accomplish that. So the DFAT material uses additives at the bass plant and the printhead? Exactly. So what we have is a super plasticizer, which enables the concrete to uh, to have this uh, you know fluid state in, in order to uh, for it to come over here. Once it reaches the the print head itself, that's where you add what we call a, a stiffener, and that stiffener basically ensures that the um, uh, the concrete sets so, such that you don't have this slumping. This combination is what will give you very smooth prints. Should be noted, however, that today we're using the bass plant, however, with the dry mix from Quick Read. So for, for today's print, it's, it's a different kind of setup. Working with local contractors who will come in and do all the, uh, the finishing afterwards. You, can, you might actually be able to see there in the back that they're doing some stuccoing uh, to a previously printed wall. So, so there are a lot of different players that come together and, and we, we cannot do this alone. That's very important for us. Now, what we have here is, um, uh, let's say the first uh, 40, 50 centimeters of a, a small uh, house. Of course, this is just a, a subsection of that house, but we wanted to show here at, at Wall of Concrete what's really possible with this uh, technology. So that came in very natural. Now, what we aimed for here was, of course, trying to do something which would normally be very costly for conventional construction. So if you see there in the back, there is a nice curve uh, added to that uh, wall, which in essence is your, uh, your added design freedom that you get by, by using a, a 3D printer. I don't know if anyone else at this whole World of Concrete event is actually building a building at the event. Sure. Um, I know that we have, for instance, the Bricklayer 500 in which they, they see how fast you can stack uh, a, I don't know, two meter wall with, with bricks. Uh, but full finalized buildings, I'm not sure. You can say the only gimmick or the only fully finalized home that we're going to do here, uh, Cobot, Quick Read and, and We Print Homes, is uh, we're going to do a little uh, dog house there actually in the back. Uh, it's just a small gimmick. One of our, uh, one of the partners here, he has a dog, Piper, that he's brought along with him. So we thought that would be fun. We've printed a few uh, chairs or a few recliners that we're gonna sit in and do an interview after, Jared, if you'd like to. I'd love to. Um, and you can see the other guys here. They come in, they do some finishing on it. Also, it was very important for us to show that. 3D printing is, is not going to come in and turn everything upside down. You can still work with the traditional uh, traits, right? So that's what we have here. It's even more visible if we turn to the side. So this was what I was talking about. They've done so some, uh, I believe you call it stuccoing off the walls. It's not fully finalized yet. They're going to come in with some mortar and, and fill in the gaps. Uh, but just to say that, of course, you can have your, your regular 3D printed wall here, which is very smooth uh, because we, we print with, with uh, flaps. Um, but you can also, if, if you're more into a more traditional look, of course, it's, it's uh, fairly straightforward uh, to come in and do some additional finishing. It seems like you move from flaps to flap. Flaps to flap, yeah, you could say that. So the reason is, and the viewers might actually be able to see it, is that when you're out here on the outside, it's more visibly over here, um, then you want it smooth because most people prefer that look and also it makes it easier if you want to do uh, plastering or put up drywall or, or any type of painting. Now, but in the inside here, uh, you're not really going to see the inside. You can actually see the layers here, but once that wall is finished, you're not going to see that thing. Also, it makes it very much easier if you have in that wall, uh, if you use wall binders to connect. So those small metal rods that you have uh, to, to for added stability. Well, if the, the problem is, if you have flaps coming on both sides and there's a wall binder, then they're gonna bump into that. Now, if you remove one flap and just have it on the outside, the exterior, then you have eliminated that issue. So that's what we're doing here. And then on the inside, of course, you're gonna have your wiring, you're gonna have your insulation, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not gonna be, be visible to the homeowner. And then you have one totally smooth over there. Sure, yeah, so here, so here you also have uh, five modules. You can actually see where they're joined together. That represents one module. So you have five in the x-axis on the width. You have five in the length on the y-axis. And then for the 
C axis, you guessed it, you have two modules. This printer actually allows for going an additional two modules on top of this one for a total of four uh, C legs, uh, four yeah. C modules, which will allow you to print again up to 27 feet. We print with any material that, that you like, uh, whether it's a mortar or real concrete. The advantage of mortar is that it's uh, relatively easy, you just mix in water, you're ready to go. If you mix your own concrete, you have to get sand, cement and gravel, but you also get a much, much lower price for the material, and generally much stronger also. So, the concrete is more complex process, it requires more equipment, but it also gives you a much lower price for the material, whereas a mortar, much easier, much less uh, equipment, um, and it's much less uh, complicated. As Philip explained, uh, the printer has the possibility to stop and go. That means we can stop the, the, the print material from exiting the, the nozzle. The reason why we can do that is that we have this hopper above the printer, which uh, the, collects the material. Because when you are working with concrete and you put it into a hose, even if you stop the pump, there's still material coming out through the hose. So you need to have some kind of receptor or collector in the end, and that's a harbor. It's also in the harbor that uh, where we apply the uh, additives if we are printing with the uh, concrete. So we apply some of the additives over in the plant to make the concrete very flowable, very pumpable, very mixable. And then we apply the last additive here at the print head. It's a stiffener so that it's really printable. The technology is still quite young and, and immature, and we're still learning a lot. Uh, and there's a lot more to be learned. In fact, I believe that in 10 years, obviously things will look a lot different uh, from now, but there's also a lot we will have learned in those 10 years. By doing these files all digitally, it's very, very easy to go in and do changes to the file in case that once you uh, start uh, doing your project, just before, let's say five minutes before, you figure out, hey, I actually want an additional bedroom or I want two more windows in my kitchen. Well, it's fairly easy if you know how to, uh, to do the software that you can five minutes before go in and change the file and the printer will just print it in that way instead. I got a question here from the audience, which was, how long does it take to actually finish the walls? Again, that question depends on which print speed we apply. Here we have gone with quite a slow print speed. You can go faster than this, up to 20 inches per second, 500 millimeters. Yesterday, we printed approximately two hours, and you can see that the uh, how, how uh, high we got uh, for those two hours. Now, if we had printed twice as fast, of course, that would have meant you would have gone twice as high. So the cleanup process will take place over there in the corner near the uh, the bass plant. You can see uh, beneath the flags. Now they're just pulling back the uh, the hose. They're going to clean out the hose using a, a high throughput water pressure um, uh, machine. So that's fully clean. You don't want any concrete to cure within a hose. Uh, you have, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, depending on the temperature. Right now here, it's, it's quite hot. So we're going to clean that uh, all the way through. And then afterwards, we're going to spray down the, uh, the silos in the batch plant. Uh, and then we're going to come basically back tomorrow and uh, repeat the process. This is more of a, a southern uh, look to it, I would say, in, in terms of uh, the, the architecture, how it looks. Plastered, exactly. Um, and then, of course, we also, just to show off a bit and show what the technology is capable of, we added all these curves here to the wall design, which would be very, very expensive to do with uh, traditional methods. And uh, on that note, I think that was a wrap for today. Uh, so we just poured the last uh, layer. The team is, uh, is super happy. I think it was uh, quite a respectful uh, respectable uh, print we have here in the back. I can't wait to have it cure and, and then we're going to have people actually come in and walk and, and feel everything in the coming days. Very exciting. Thanks for letting me come in uh, a day early before it's too crowded to get any good audio. <laughs> of course. Thanks a lot, Jared, for, for always being on the forefront and, and covering all of this. We uh, appreciate it. And thanks to all of you guys who, who tuned in today.